Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So we last left off with upgrading the space station between Mars and Europa. But of course we're running out of platinum to refine to make our shields. So unfortunately we have to go back to Mars, get that platinum, and refine a ton more platinum so we could get our shield started for our main ship, our fighter ship, and even some space stations. Alright, so as I was planning to go down back to Mars to our platinum deposit, I decided to create a large hydrogen tank outside, which is not very well protected, but I think I needed that extra hydrogen just to make sure we land in Mars and get out of Mars at the same time. We definitely need to add more large atmosphere thrusters so we can have a nice hovering going or maybe add some wheels while we get down there uh probably likely gonna add the atmospheric thrusters instead but i just need to find a good placement for them all right so we got two large atmosphere thrusters equipped on the large grid ship the respawn pod really uh we have some welders here but i'm gonna leave it for now and we should be good to go i should probably protect this a little bit better but i'm just gonna leave it as is but now i just got a program the thrusters and get going all right so everything is all set just had to make some last minute changes and check on my systems so it is now time to go and head back into mars and i'm checking my gps and i don't think i saved where i found platinum the first time which is a bit of an issue but that's okay we're all gonna have to find it some other way so I'm thinking of landing near the ice over there because I am actually out of ice myself and there should be a nice flat area right next to it as well. So we will definitely try our best to get to that point there. Another thing to check is actually my parachute hatch. I did queue up like 50 diff um, canvases just in case. But we need to make sure it's on auto deploy. Yes, it is. It's on auto deploy, so it should help us from crash landing. So let's just not do too little, but maybe a thousand meters, which is about one kilometer away. And that should do it. So again, we should have a ton of hydrogen because of the two large hydrogen tanks that I have now. Plus the small ones that are all in the front. So this is going to probably last us for quite some time hopefully. But pretty much we're just going to cruise now for the long run. Let's see here. Oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so I curved down a little too far and I destroyed some stuff. All right, so let's assess the damage really quick. It doesn't look too bad from out here or from inside. Outside looks terrible. It looks like it lost a... Landing gear, turrets. Luckily, I didn't lose any of that. Uh, what else is damaged? Uh, there's a lot of other stuff that's damaged, it looks like. But we should be okay. So it looks like it's more of some steel plate fixes. And yeah, definitely shouldn't be flying that low, but uh, it happens, I guess. A little unfortunate. <laughs> But let's get the, all the scraps and probably just put it, put the ship back together a little bit. All right, just like new, everything's fixed up and <laughs> minimal damage in the inside. Uh, some cargo containers, some connection tubes were a little damaged. They didn't break, which is good. But the projector system actually helped me from saving the ship from its untimely 
mistake. <laughs> well, save me from having to figure out what was there and what wasn't there and things like that. So, uh, it is what it is. So, let's get going. Alright, so I think we lost a lot of hydrogen either because we broke some hydrogen tanks. I don't think we did. No, we didn't. I think it's mainly from just floating around like this the whole time. And it really reduced our hydrogen by a lot. So let's not do that again and let's fly a little higher than when we should be. And then we should also hope that this thinking weather changes a little bit because I can't see a thing. Um, but hopefully I don't run out of ice. Once I run out of ice, that's going to be a problem because I'm going to have to find ice just to get back into space. Which it shouldn't be an issue because I think we landed close to an ice uh, place. And there should be a ton out there somewhere. So I am having a really hard time seeing with this weather. So I'm going to have to wait for it to kind of pass by and then really uh, get that changed. Alright, so because I'm wasting a lot of ice this way or hydrogen this way. Gonna have to find the platinum on foot as the optimal way of doing this. Um, so let's update my drill. Maybe it'll make a drill number three. And we're just gonna have to fly around and really look for the platinum because this is really killing my hydrogen by a lot. Alright, so it looks like I found some platinum right here. And it's. It, we didn't look too far. Far actually, I did a quite bit of a circle, and of course, the nearest spot next to my ship it was exactly where the platinum is, as always. But that's fine. But at least we have a good spot for it, so we can create our drilling platform. All right, so let's grab our ship and hop on over to the platinum area. We're not gonna get too close because I'm gonna have to build the drilling rig there and mine some platinum. So let's get as close as we can, but hopefully not waste too much our ice. So apparently four large thrusters, atmosphere thrusters, and ten small atmosphere thrusters. It's not even enough to get us above ground without really falling. And you know what it might be? It actually might be because... I don't have enough power, so not enough batteries. So let's just make a few more batteries so that we can start moving around a little bit better with the atmosphere thrusters. So that's going to save us on a lot of ice usage. Although we're probably going to still have to use it here and there. Alright, so I added two more batteries onto the ship and it's holding well, so I don't have to use my ice, it might not ice, the hydrogen at least to kind of float around which is ideal so I think that's gonna work perfect so let's head over to our platinum deposit that we found and we're probably gonna try to glide with our iron thrusters which is probably not gonna pull us anywhere no I'm actually falling kind of backwards like that so we're gonna have to turn on the ice just a little bit or hydrogen thrusters just a little bit just to get us moving and we just turn it off and we'll probably turn it back on once we get close so that way we can just stop ourselves from that way but at least we can float that's the ideal at least and we're getting kind of close to it about 600 let's get kind of close because I need to start grabbing stuff from this ship also to start making this drilling rig that I had had installed or had had a plan for all right, so we're almost there. Let's stop it right around here. Perfect. And it looks like we're pretty much on top of more platinum as well. So it should be okay. All right, so we landed. Turn that off. Let's just turn everything off, save some batteries. Make sure our turrets are on to protect ourselves. And they are. And we're good to go. So now it's time to build out this drilling rig that I had in mind. So we can travel around Mars take as much things as possible and then 
probably never come back or if i did have to come back at least i have a drilling rig to help me with the uh collection of stuff so let's get that started right now All right, so we are back. So we can call this a monstrosity of a drilling rig or a drilling rover because it's on wheels. And it is doing its job with its digging and mining for stone and potentially platinum. So let's take a look at the build itself. All right, so the build consists of the idea and the main idea was this pincer or circle so that the drilling can be targeted easily and have the drilling portion of it you know kind of go through it in a circle supposedly i wanted to make it a little more compact with the pistons and everything like that so it turned out to be almost looking like a scorpion so it's close to a scorpion look as i said in previous episodes i tend to have a quick idea start building as i go and it always turns out to be almost like an insect or some animal or something similar to that. I don't know why it just does that. Maybe it's just what's in my mind. Who knows? Um, but yeah, this build took quite some time, but hope you guys did enjoy the time lapse of the entire build. All right. So right now it is drilling and I'm looking for platinum, some more platinum actually. And I did change the drill a little bit based on what you saw in the time lapse. But before we get through that, this is basically a large grid rover build with 5x5 five five wheels and total of 6 wheels, 3 on both sides. Initially there was one here as well and there was none in the back which caused a bit of an issue because the sh rover decided to do a wheelie while it's digging. I'm not sure exactly why, maybe it's too heavy with the 3 large cargoes being completely filled with stone. That might be it, I'm not sure but it made a wheelie. And I decided to make the wheels more towards the back. Uh, we did leave these two wheels on the sides here for a little bit. But it didn't really do too much. So I decided to just remove them. So we did technically didn't need it at all. all. Right. So basically what we have of course is an ore detector to look for the ore. Control seat. A gyroscope just in case. We have five large cargo containers. Four baddies on each side, total of eight. 
and two refineries. So the refineries are both holding one speed mod for now. So that it can quickly, quickly refine stone to get iron, nickel, silicone, and gravel. And of course, you'll see these things here that I don't normally use too much of. But it's the converter sorters. So these are sorting just the stone as this one here and, and the other side to grab from the large cargo containers so that it will transfer only stone into the refinery because I don't want the platinum to be refined through these refineries because my ship has the yield mods which I prefer to use those instead. So once it's finished with that, with that it can transfer out everything else to the large containers that way. So it's a bit of a system, not too crazy of a system, but it kind of works for now. And some solar panels just for energy. If you, in the time lapse you saw some turbines which were working because the rover initially was considered a station because it was connected to the ground. But once I took those things off, the turbines no longer worked, so I removed them and put the solar panels here instead. And of course the drilling rig itself. It is now connected with three hinge blocks just to add some more security to it uh, so that it folds from a 0 to a 90 degree easily without any issues. And it is extended by two pistons going up, three pistons going horizontally, and about five pistons going downwards. And I was using a different type of drill system earlier with the when you saw in the time lapse. And it was the combination of a rotor and hinge block drilling system that I did in one of my experiments. Which worked out okay, but it was a little too slow for my taste. Because I haven't really fine-tuned the timing for everything. So I went back to my original swinging left and right or up and down um, hinge block style for now. Eventually I'll probably change that out. To probably do something a little faster because uh, this is a rover drilling machine so we probably want to have something quicker than slower to be honest because if you want too slow uh, it's not going to work out because you want to drive around find that ore drill down and just obtain what we can quickly as possible and move on from there but if it was a rig itself that's stationary that's going to collect a lot of material then yeah I, would, I wouldn't mind it being slow but since it's a rover it's a bit slow the only thing I didn't add that I probably should do is put a piston somewhere on this rover with the landing gear so then when we're ready to dig we can lock in so that we don't see that wheelie or this whole as you see here everything's just like bumping around everywhere it's going a little crazy but with the landing gear locked in it would help and prevent it from actually doing that wheelie but it can also cause other issues but it probably would be better to actually install that but i don't have it now because uh didn't think of making it just yet, but and I couldn't find a good spot for it, so I'll probably do it a little bit later. It looks like we found some platinum, but we can barely scratch the surface of it, so we need to put, probably put down the pistons in the back. But before we do that, let's show you the system itself. Alright, so the system here is built on... The main thing in the back is the hinge that sways 0 to 90 degrees, and then extensions of the pistons going up going forward and going down so when you put it together it looks pretty cool um, in terms of retracting it and extending it so right now I'm gonna retract it uh, as quickly as possible so retracting the downwards pistons as you see there And I think we're completely filled with stone, so that's why it's not retracting all the way, but it's okay. Alright, so I had to move some things around because the drills had too much stuff in it, so it was too heavy. So I was able to retract the drills, pistons going downwards, up, back up. So now let's go back to our settings. And we're going to retract the hinge in the back to be 0 degrees. So flip over that way. And then at the very same time, we can retract the horizontal pistons on the very top so that it can close up a little bit and also the pistons that were going upwards so now the stinging mechanism or the drilling mechanism now it's become a little bit more compact 
so that we can travel with and everything like that and it doesn't look too crazy or too tall so the system moves and drives fairly well so if we move we could drive it's very slow because it probably needs more wheels or maybe some thruster power just to get it going but as you see here we can move it left and right it's quite slow but if you look at the bottom right you'll see how heavy of a load this thing is carrying so that's what more than likely why it is super super slow to move this big guy uh, scorpion rover drilling machine so that's what it looks like when you have everything compact and it's not terrible it could probably be a little bit more compact and lower if we wanted to but based on the length of it we had to make it that tall and it, and it looks decent um, when you have the hinge off here. It just dangles the drilling system a little bit for some reason, but it's all right. But now everything is secured. I put some little bumpers here so it can land there perfectly fine with no issues. And of course, there's no color to it just yet, but we hope to do that sooner or later. And if it's going to be a scorpion looking like thing or maybe even a dung beetle looking like thing, it's likely going to be a dark color. Let's extend it again and pretty much see how that looks like so first we're gonna extend the back or it's the upwards pistons and then we're gonna extend the horizontal pistons with the hinge now moving on a nine degrees upwards angle so then we can have a nice little turn or so where it's gonna hit exactly towards the middle of my pincer or circled area which is actually my targeting system to find ores and things like that so now I found platinum down there we can actually get to it so even with five pistons the platinum is pretty deep so this platinum is about 45 meters deep five pistons in a drill system like this barely scratched the surface for the platinum but that's okay it's because we have the rear upwards pistons which we can drop down so for an example we'll drop this down after digging such a big hole then we could redo and drop down these downward pistons so we can gather the pretty much the rest of the platinum so I'm gonna do that a little bit off camera just grab as much as I can and then we're going to have to find a way to transfer all this platinum, all the stone that it's gathering and creating iron, gravel, nickel, and silicone back into my ship somehow. And I'm thinking of some kind of collector system that can drive around to transport into the ship. We'll see how that goes in maybe the next episode. Alright, so once again, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode and the build of this massive rover drilling machine and of course you can show us your support by hitting that thumbs up by liking the video subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and of course leave us some comments and as always i'll see you guys next time bye